Kia ora and welcome to Māori Minds where I explore Māori philosophy and mental health and find new ways of applying traditional knowledge. My name is Kitty Prentice, I'm a consultant psychiatrist and my iwi affiliations are to Ngai Tūhoi and Ngāti Awa. We divide mental health and addiction needs in terms of their severity from mild, moderate to severe. We can see that primary care services in general take care of people whose needs are in the mild to moderate range. Specialist mental health and addiction services in general provide care for people with severe, complex or high risk mental health and addiction needs. In reality this is quite the artificial divide and people's needs don't neatly fall into any categories and in fact many people fall through the gaps. Primary care and specialist mental health and addiction services have different funding streams. Specialist services include hospital and community based services and following the Mason inquiry of 1988 a ring fence was put around the funding for specialist mental health and addiction services to prevent that being reallocated elsewhere. It was estimated at that time that 3% of the population per year would require help for severe mental health and addiction needs. A small proportion of people within mental health and addiction services will be treated subject to the Mental Health Act. We know that 3% grossly underestimates the mental health and addiction needs of people in Aotearoa. In the period from 2008 and 2009, to 2015-2016, there was a 54% increase in people accessing specialist mental health and addiction services. In the same time period, there was a 95% increase in Māori accessing mental health and addiction services. So, you can appreciate how underfunded mental health and addiction services are in this country. In 2019, Māori made up 17% of the population in this country. but they comprised 29% of the people who were accessing specialist mental health and addiction services. Māori are 3.6 times more likely to be treated on inpatient or hospital-based compulsory treatment orders under the Mental Health Act and 3.8 times more likely than their non-Māori counterparts to be treated on community-based compulsory treatment orders. Of those Māori who are on compulsory treatment orders, 79% are within the most deprived deciles in terms of socio and economic status. There is high variability between district health boards and the number of Māori treated on compulsory treatment orders. My concern is that these differences can't be accounted for by regional socio-economic differences amongst Māori. I think that part of the variation is attributable to differences in mental health and addiction service provision across DHBs and differences in individual mental health practitioners application of this law. If we are not applying this law consistently and if we are not delivering the same standard of mental health and addiction services across the country that raises very serious ethical and moral questions for me about mental health and addiction services in Aotearoa. There is a national health target to reduce the rates of compulsory treatment orders in Māori to address this health disparity. This is a laudable aspiration but very difficult to achieve because even though I've speculated about some of the potential causes for this health disparity, I don't think we yet understand fully why there is a difference between the number of Māori being treated under compulsory treatment orders versus their non-Māori counterparts. So there you go, a snapshot of mental health and addiction services with a particular focus on Māori. He mihi mahana, kia koutou katoa, kia paitora, kia kite. Oh.